Hi everyone and welcome to the power of her story. It is such a delight to have you join me once again as we curate and celebrate the journey of women around the world. As women, you know, we go through many, many, many of life's challenges. And sometimes we may feel that no one's there. It's only me one who is experiencing this. But as we begin to talk and share, we'll find that others may share similar stories to ours. And we can exchange uh, nuggets, things that help us to overcome life's challenges. And so I say this, life is a journey of people, places, and perspective. And the journey of my life took me last year into a city called Montana. And it's a very, very beautiful place. I went there during the winter. So I was in the mountains, lots of snow. But what was most important, even in the midst of all of the cold, there were some warm hearted people who was there to chaperone and be there for me. And today we still maintain a very wonderful, warm relationship because trust me, it was extremely cold. Could you imagine being 10,000 feet above sea level? Yes, I was 10,000 feet above sea level, but it was such an enjoyable experience, one that I would never forget. And today we have an opportunity to meet one of my wonderful friends from Montana. And so let's welcome to our show today, Sasha, all the way from Montana. Welcome, Sasha. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Raquel. Yes, I'm so happy to see you again, and I'm so happy that we we'll become friends. Yeah, because yes. I, yeah, because I'm not Montanan originally, and everybody can hear this from my accent. <laughs> <laughs> and this have changed a little bit just after my 12 years living in Montana mostly. But anyway, yes, I'm Sasha. I'm originally from Russia and I was born in Siberia. Okay. This is yes, the central Siberia. So and I live in Montana for 12 years in the so United That's a very far transition. <laughs> Yes. To move from Siberia and Russia and to now be in Montana. What brought that transition about? Uh, that happened almost 12 years ago. I used to live and work in uh, Moscow, the capital of Russia, for 10 years before moving to, Monta to, to the United States. I worked for uh, the joint venture that was called TNK BP. It's uh, the first that was the first joint venture uh, on the uh, governmental level between uh, Great Britain and Russia when Putin became the president and Tom Blair was the prime minister in Great in the Great Britain. So. I worked on Arbat One in very downtown center of historical center of Moscow, and I was invited to work for this company when I lived and worked in Siberia for oil and gas. Wow. So, yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm they so far away from home. <laughs> Yes, and they invited me to uh, join the project, the new project that TNK, uh, that BP uh, implemented in Russia on uh, development of uh, oil fields in Siberia. So uh, I was a, a coordinator and executive assistant of the project of director and with the billion, with the budget one point six billion dollars, and wow. our. Mm -hmm. And that was the biggest project for British Petroleum in the history. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. And That's an amazing story. Do you miss home? I do. I do. And I miss <laughs> my home every year. I do. Yeah. So, what's the weather like in Montana? In Montana now, it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit. 90. Okay, so I need to come back to Montana during the summer. <laughs> yeah, because first, and go ahead, sorry. Yes, unfortunately, I can visit my country, my my mom, my daughter, and my sister's family only in winter time when I don't have groups here in Man to Montana uh, wow. because of the season. They're talking about groups. 
I'm not going to tell your story. You tell us about where you work and all these wonderful people because that's how I got to meet you. <laughs> okay. Yes. Actually, I work for World Maintain and I'm sitting in my office and World Maintain, you can see the cowboy boot and World Maintain words and you can see the map behind me, the world map. And you can see a lot of photos behind me. These are my groups. What kind of groups? What kind of people? Uh, we are non-profit. And we work in Montana for 33 years. And we every year, we bring about 150 international visitors, pro young professionals to Montana from all over the world through the programs found, funded by the State Department. So, Miss Raquel, she was she was the uh, international participant or visitor, and she uh, visited several states, including Montana. Uh, I am because I'm not American originally, and I am a, a cosmopolitan. I like the world. I like people. And when I moved to Montana in 2008, end of 2008, then we lived uh, in Kansas City. And in 2011, we returned to Montana and settled down in Helena. So I was trying to find the job that would fit me because I actually, I started to work in Macy's uh, in Kansas City and uh, they transferred me to Macy's here in Helena, Montana. But I volunteered for international groups and translated from English into Russian, forth and back. And then they invited me to join the board of World Montana. I was a board member for three years. And then I joined some part-time to the office because till today we have only one staff at the office this is executive director and in nine months i was interviewed by the board and they mm -hmm. say hey, sasha now you're executive director and starting the first of october 2016 almost four years for four years i'm executive director and i do these programs this is my passion this is the biggest part of my life this is the job of my dream i would say because people because all the world comes here to montana montana is huge with the big sky but we only with one million people i came here from 23 million people city which is moscow is <laughs> so and my native city was two million people actually and still is two wow. million people in siberia city number three in my country so i'm here Unfortunately, this situation, this situation didn't, you know, just this year we didn't have in-person programs and we started only in July with virtual programs and we continue now. Wow, Sasha, and I can attest um, during my visit to Montana, Sasha is an influencer in Montana. Sasha knows everybody in Montana, wherever we went, any business, um, any <laughs> nonprofit organizations, yeah. everybody knows Sasha. And so I felt like a VIP because I was introduced to the top people. I was in the governor's office. <laughs> they had me everywhere <laughs> to ensure that I had a wonderful exchange, cultural and educational exchange. But Sasha, I'm quite certain, because congratulations to you on your position as executive director, but I'm sure that journey was not easy, um, considering one, you had a cultural change coming oh, yeah. from Russia into United States. Um, you're a woman um, now in leadership and impacting the community. You had to adapt to a new kind of people around you, um, leaving family. What was that like? was it was it difficult for you how did mm -hmm. you manage through the transition with these kinds of challenges first and foremost for moving to russia sorry rather moving from russia and secondly also 
um, like you said, you started with Macy's and that was not your dream job, but you kept pushing in spite of um, to find what it is that you found, you know, was the best fit for you. What the challenge, what challenges did you experience along the way? Yes. Okay. So first I think I need to, to explain why I moved to the United States because that was not my dream to leave my country. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I lived in Moscow, I had the opportunity to travel all over European countries just on the weekend, two hour flight just from Moscow to Prague, to Paris. And I did that many, many, many times just for the weekend. And uh, um, I think it was January. Yes, <laughs> end of January. And I, I had a trip to Prague, Czech Republic, and I met occasionally on charles bridge i met a man who was you know just who was walking slowly and he looked like you know like lost person mm -hmm. and i came to him there were three of us but i spoke better english that maybe that was my privilege <laughs> i asked him just do you need any help he said mm, i don't know you know just i have a map and i don't know how to get this that place i said okay just we can show you and that was the first talk with my future husband and I, oh. yes, yes, yes that was saturday on monday morning we were leaving back to moscow because the weeks uh, the working days started but he stayed one week more in prague why prague because he has russian Czech roots from his father and from his mother's side and he came to Prague be, to, to learn more about his you know just previous generations and mm. on Sunday we were walking you know around Prague and because I'm more he's a shy guy definitely and <laughs> I, I like to talk yes and I I ask people do you know this uh, family name um, um Kovar, Kovash, Kovash. They are here in Hel in Montana or in the United States, they are Kovash or Kovach. But mm. what Kovach? No, we have Kovar. Kovar. And every second he is Kovar. The, this is what people told us. But Kovar means sleep in English. Oh. Yes. Interesting. So, Learn that. Yes. So I have made a discovery for myself and for for my future husband because he never he couldn't imagine that this is the same Smith. Yeah. But in Russian it's Kuznetsov. So I'm Kuznetsov here. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fun. Yeah. And, then we left and just we had a long time of Skype, Skype communication, and then he came twice to Russia, and I showed him Moscow, I showed him St. Petersburg, and when he gave, uh, he made a proposal to me on the second trip, I said, okay, now it's time to go to see my parents in Siberia, because it doesn't matter how old or young I am, but it's a sign of respect to parents. And we went to my native city, yeah, and so he met my family, and he'd been in Russia for five years, uh, just five times at least after that. Mm -hmm. So this is, that was my start. I moved to the United States, I came to Man Billings, Montana, this is from Billings, in, at the end of November, that was cold time, and uh, on, on fiancé visa, yeah. and. Because I had two masters from Russia, so I I was a high school teacher and vice, worked as vice principal high school, huge high school, yeah. And I thought that everybody will be waiting for me here and say, "Hello, Sasha, you're welcome to work for oil and gas industry." And I was trying to find a job. Nobody, everybody was hearing my accent. That was British Russian accent because in Russia we study Royal British. Mm -hmm. And as for the English, American English, uh, we get it only for one semester. Mm -hmm. And that was my biggest problem. I could not understand American English at all with their... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, so just I started to work for uh, daycare 
in summertime mm -hmm. and then we moved to kansas city from K in kansas city i started to work for macy's and the store manager uh, told me oh sasha you improved your english so much you know just i remember your accent nobody could understand you i said i couldn't understand anybody <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that was a great school for me to see the country the united states from inside not as a tourist and that was the be the best the best school that i have went through mm -hmm. um when we and after kansas city we moved here to helena and um in helena i worked as an executive director for the private company that was called Montana cattle company so i was busy with cows from Montana, <laughs> and I was shipping these live cows for breeding to the plains um, in Chicago to bring them, to ship them to Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan in Central Asia for breeding. Mm -hmm. And customers from these Central Asian countries came to Montana, and we went to different ranches to they selected the cattle and i worked with uh, ranchers and i've learned much about the life of ranchers in montana they have five generations of ranchers and busy been busy with cattle and i've learned so much about montana about montana and people and um so and again international visitors i mean customers cattle customers came here and i also just saw the real you know, animals and Yellowstone as well. And so then, uh -huh. yeah, yes. And um, then just I joined the uh, two volunteer World Montana for World Montana. Mm -hmm. And so my biggest problems or concerns were my language mm -hmm. because Montana is very conservative and mm -hmm. Very often I was trying to talk by phone with somebody, especially elderly people. They, I don't understand you. Boom. And I could, <laughs> yeah, it took a long time for me yeah, to feel comfortable. And um, uh, when I came here, everything, when I came here, I had a feeling that I moved to another planet. Mm. And I, yes, I even had very strange uh, night dreams. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. But it's, yes, my like my my head was a globe with a lot of antennas. So it's very <laughs> interesting. Yes, yeah, yeah. There was a culture, a lot of cultural shocks I went through. Just I still don't have a uh, uh, a lot of American food. I don't eat this. My husband does, but I don't. But he learned a lot of Russian stuff, food stuff that I can cook. And but at the same time, when I go back to Russia to visit my family, I don't eat a lot of stuff that they eat now. So uh -huh. after three years, after three years living in the United States, I was I had a feeling that I'm not here yet but i am not back to russia already i was in okay. between mm -hmm. okay yeah yes so i understand that so well because i moved here well it's all still a part of the bahamas so culturally generally we're all the same but each island has still has its uniqueness and so yeah. with me living on grand bahama island coming here it was like okay <laughs> They don't, they're different. Um, they're not always as friendly. Yes. <laughs> but as yeah. you get to, it's like you have to, you have to get to know them and then it's, okay, it's a whole yes. different world all together. So yes. it's just yes. bringing two different cultures together. And yeah. I know how challenging, challenging that could be for me. It took a while before I actually developed friendships uh, with yeah. people because it's like, okay like no i don't do that and okay that's what y'all eat okay no i don't eat it like that so. yeah. but now it's home it's it's home and um i love it i love it so um 
I'm no longer in, I call it in between, <laughs> but I mean, I still fly in between every year. Yeah. Yeah. To go back home to visit with yeah. my family um, in Nassau. And yeah. so, yeah. So, Sasha, where do you yeah. see yourself 10 years from now? You're doing a great work with World Man Montana in, um, you know, introducing persons to a new culture. It's a cultural exchange and education exchange program that you're a part of. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Okay. <laughs> in 10 years, I see myself retired <laughs> because uh, because I came here not when I was 20 years old and I'm retired already in Russia and I hope to get retirement here in the United States as well soon but I still continue I will continue definitely to work uh, or to connect with World Montana as a volunteer and now I know I have a unique experience that nobody has uh, in terms of international relations, international programs and hosting the groups. Uh, and so just I think I would be the, yeah, just a very valuable helper with the programs. To me, uh, this job is for younger generation. Uh, and now I am the only at the office, but we need to find uh, younger people who would like to stay here and to devote uh, themselves to this job. So we need not a person for one year, we need a person for several years. Yeah, so this is what I see. So you plan to be retired in 10 years. Does that mean you're going back to Russia? No. Wow, no, no. My granddaughter was born here in Helena, and now she's six and a half. She lives in Moscow with her parents. She's bilingual, and every summer, expect this summer, she comes here and spend all three months with us. And she's an international, small international person, and I want her to be a cosmopolitan. And that was my present to her. Uh, when she was born uh, to to give her a birth to her just here in in another country and i think she will continue you know just what her grandma is doing in some way yeah so what in our closing what words of encouragement that you would give to women who are seeking to make a big leap moving to another country taking on some form of adventure something that they've never done before what would you say first you need to know the language of the country where you're moving to if you don't speak their language you need to take classes so you need to adjust uh to uh, to 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 adjust into this uh, the society this society in other society as soon as quick and you never stop you need to move forward because if you had a position certain position in your country you need to achieve about the same in this new country because you need to find the place under the sun for yourself in another society this you should and never give up never give up well there you have it folks you heard from sasha in montana all the way from world montana organization it's a non-profit organization in montana that provides and services and entertains and hosts international visitors from around the world introducing them to the montana culture and the word and the nuggets that i took away from sasha today particularly for us as women Sometimes we find ourselves having to make very, very tough decisions, having to yeah. disconnect um, family ties to move somewhere else, perhaps for employment or perhaps some other form of opportunity or just a change. And like she said, first and foremost is don't not give up. Um, learn the culture, the language of the country and you will find yourself yes. um, sooner or later immersing in that particular culture and becoming a part and assimilating in that culture where you can begin to give back and to create impact in that community such as what sasha is doing creating impact because of her impact in the community of montana she and i are now having this interview today and sasha i remember meeting her in the airport and like i said 
I had on bundles of clothes on. <laughs> but her warm welcome and greeting just made me just feel at home. And it was just a wonderful experience to spend so, so much time there. I, I got to meet persons from foundations, universities, um, government organizations. You know, those are things like that is priceless. Yes. Yes, it is a yeah. priceless um, experience. And I thank you, Sasha, for making life easy for me during that time. <laughs> I even learned about it. She was like, okay, because of the altitude, drink a lot of water. Because I'm like, okay, why am I having heart palpitations? <laughs> I'm like, okay, am I having heart attack? <laughs> I can't be all, all the way over here. No, yes. yeah. the altitude is different. You have to drink a lot of water, keep hydrated mm -hmm. because you're going to feel mm -hmm. as if it's And I was like, Okay, mm -hmm. I'm not dying. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. But yes, we must not give up. Even though life becomes very challenging at times, we must oh, yes. remember, like Sasha says, do not give up. And so, ladies, women, men, girls, everyone who's watching, yes. remember, <laughs> do not give up. If there's a goal and a dream you're pursuing, yes, it may become a little bit challenging. It may take you somewhere else out of your comfort zone into another country. But the key is to learn as much as you can, as quickly as you yes. can about that country. Immerse yourself into that culture. And sooner or later, you'll find yourself fulfilling purpose wherever you are. It doesn't have to be at home where you were born, but home can become wherever your heart is. If you love what you do, it comes home. So thank you so much, Sasha, for joining us. Give my love to Jeffrey and his family. Checking out some pumpkin cookies. I Tell them to send me some pumpkin cookies, pumpkin spice cookies. Yes, I love you. <laughs> thank you very much and for having me here today. It's been my pleasure to have you here to share. And I know we're going to have somebody else from IVLP or World Montana as well. And so we're going to share a yeah. lot about what's happening around the world with all the various IVLP alumni who are also a part of this, about some of them will be a part of this program as well. I want you to remember in closing, life is a journey of people, places, and perspective. Don't give up. If you have a goal or a dream, don't give up. Whatever it is that you're going through, do not give up. Life is about process, 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 process. And so at the end of process is the promise. Thank you for joining us here at RBN TV studio with the power of her story. Feel free to continue to follow us every Monday with the power of her story on RBN TV studio at YouTube, or you can connect with us on Facebook or Instagram. You can email us or WhatsApp. Let us know what do you think about our shows. Let us know how, what you would like to see, comment, share, like all those wonderful things. We're here bringing great news to you and in order to bring transformation and empowerment into your life. Thank you so much for joining us once again. God bless and see you again real soon. There is a point of